Hello, I'm Atubo Judge. Hey, today is Friday. Praise God. And God has been so good to us since Monday. Listen, listen, find a way. Listen to this week's message. It's so important for you. Very important. Listen to it again. And listen Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and today's message. Listen. And then also help us share. Not just listen. And say, oh, mm, good message. No, share. Praise God. Share to your contacts. Share to everyone around you. And God bless you as you do this. Praise God. Hey, are you ready to call for today's daily bread? Now, listen, I always tell you on Fridays, we're, only, we're not just calling for one day, we're calling for the whole weekend. <laughs> Praise God. Join me right now in faith. Hey, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. And I demand what will sustain me till Monday. In Jesus' name, amen. A miracle is taking place in your life. Why? Because God is showing you his goodness. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, yesterday I was sharing something so important with you. We are talking about the two covenants that God made with Abraham. The covenant of sustenance, which is the covenant of tithing, and also the covenant of um, territorial protection, which with that, that, that that's that's signified or uh, that's signified by the covenant of circumcision. Now you see in the covenant of sustenance. The role of Abraham was to bring his tithe. So the covenant of territorial protection is in inheritance and protection. The Abraham's part was to be circumcised. So in, in a covenant, God does his part. You do your own part also. Now, I was sharing with you yesterday certain controversies that uh, came in as a result of the teachings of Paul. And I was trying to explained to you yesterday that it's not everything Paul said that is right. Or sometimes, even Peter said it. Peter said some of the teachings of Paul, people misunderstood them. Yes, Peter said that. And I think that's in, in Second Peter, chapter 3, I think. Peter made that statement that some of his teachings are too hard to be understood, which people who are unlearned stumble like they do other scriptures. Now, so when you're studying the scriptures, you must understand who is speaking. Why is he saying this? Is it God that is speaking? And I also tell, told you yesterday, even when God is speaking, you need to understand, is he speaking out of anger? Or is he speaking his wisdom? Now, if God is speaking his wisdom, now that is sure. You can't change that. Now, if God is speaking out of anger and judgment, Mercy can speak and that can be changed. So when you see things in the Bible, be careful how you say the word of God says. No, it's not everything that is in the Bible that is the word of God. You get that now? So take note of those things. So we're talking about circumcision yesterday. I like, And I told you something. I said circumcision is as much important as it is today as it was then. Why? Because that is man's response. Now, yes, Paul was teaching that there is something um, bigger than the cutting of the flesh. It is now the cutting of the heart. Right? Now, yes, um, when we receive Christ, when we get born again, like Paul spoke about the circumcision that is made not made with hands, it's made, made with... Uh, uh, by the cutting, by the cutting of the heart, not the foreskin. Now, Jesus spoke about circumcision in J in John chapter seven, and he was rebuking the the Jews. He said, "You guys, you allow a child to be circumcised on the Sabbath day because you don't want to break the law of Moses." Then Jesus now said, "Actually, that's not the law of Moses. That's actually from the fathers." You see that now this is Jesus. So now Jesus was teaching something. Although he was rebuking the Jews, so he brought a scenario. I want you to understand. He brought a scenario that, look, you guys allow for a child to be circumcised. Nobody's supposed to work on the Sabbath day. But the act of circumcising a child in their law is regarded as work. 
So Jesus said, because the law of Moses said on the eighth day, so you guys allow somebody to walk on the eighth day by circumcising a child so you don't break the law of Moses. Then Jesus now corrected his statement by saying that actually that is from the fathers. What is he science trying to say? That he didn't put down circumcision. He never did. That's why he corrected it by saying, it's not actually Moses that gave you that law. It's from the fathers. Now, anything from the fathers, anything from the fathers, you must keep it. And God speaking in Genesis chapter 17. Now, why, why did Paul go to that extent? I'll tell you why. Now, because the Jews, they carry on with this attitude of we are the circumcised ones. We are the, so in their mind, they put everybody down. So they feel, even as Christians, when they got born again, you know, they still felt that there's something so unique about us that is not in you. Because they understood the meaning of circumcision. Number one, it's an act of faith. So every time a child is circumcised, to them, and which is the truth, it's actually an act of faith. Now there are modern ways of doing it. So we don't think much of the faith aspect. But it's actually an act of faith. You are cutting the foreskin of that child. And that thing didn't come from any medical doctor. The origin of that thing didn't come from any research. The origin of that thing came from the mouth of God. It came from the mouth of God. So if you ask me, should we still circumcise today? My answer is yes. Yes. Not as a law, like, look, if you don't circumcise. No, but listen, we are bringing ourselves before the Lord and say, we are the seed of Abraham. Now, because of this statement from God himself, watch this. Now, I know a lot of want to argue this, but, but hey, listen. Genesis chapter 17. Verse 2. God is speaking here. And he says, maybe we should start from verse 1. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am Almighty God. Walk before me and be blameless. Who's speaking? God is speaking. And I will make my, my covenant between me and you and will multiply you exceedingly. Abraham fell on his face and God spoke to him and said, As for me, behold, my covenant is with you. You shall, know, you shall be a father of many nations. No longer shall you be called Abraham, but your name shall be called Abraham. For I have made you a father of many nations, yet I will make you exceedingly fruitful. Take note, I will make you exceedingly. Now, these are the terms of the covenant. God said, my part, on my part, I want you to follow this. On my part, I will make you exceedingly fruitful. And I will make nations of you and kings shall come from you. God said, this is my part. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you in their generations. Watch this. I will establish my covenant between you for an everlasting covenant. Uh, sorry. Uh, is it, and I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants. I will establish my covenant between me and you, between me and your descendants after you in their generations. Take note of that. In their generations, meaning... He wasn't just talking about Isaac, Jacob. He was talking about every generation afterwards till now. So God said, I will establish this covenant in every generation. Okay. For an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your descendants after you. Of course, that includes in their generations. Also, I give now part of the statements, the details of the covenant states also, verse 8 now. Also, I give to you and your descendants after you the land in which you are, you are a stranger. 
Now God says, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession and I will be their God. Right? Now God says in verse 9, and God said to Abraham, as for you. Now take note, a covenant always have two sides. So this is God have, God have stated his own side. This is what I'm going to do for you. Then now he comes and says, as for you, you shall keep my covenant, you and your descendants after you throughout their generations. Take note of that again, throughout their generation. Now, Christ is a generation. Now, that's the generation we belong. God says throughout their generations, okay? Now, watch this. This is my covenant which you shall keep between me and you and your descendants after you. What is it? Every male child among you shall be circumcised. Who said that? God. How long is this supposed to last? Every generation. Oh, let me show you something. You need to see this now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Mm. Okay, Tambra. Now, Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1. Hey, see what it says here. From verse 1. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ. Right? The son of David, the son of Abraham. Now he began to list. Abraham begot Isaac. Isaac begot Jacob. Jacob begot Judah. Judah, beco Judah and his brothers. Judah begot, begot Perez, um, Perez. And Perez and Zerah. By Tama, Perez begat Hishron. Now he went on and on and on. And then, watch this. He got to verse 17. Now he, he, he continued until he got to Mary, um, Joseph, and then Jesus, right? Then in verse 17, he said, So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. Are you seeing this now? So 14 generations. Remember what God said in all their generations. So Abraham to David was 14 generations, right? Then, and from David until the captivity in Babylon are 14 generations. Another 14 generations. So you see that? So 14 plus 14 now, 28 generations, right? Okay. Then it says, and from the captivity in Babylon until Christ are 14 generations. So now he tells you, Christ is the last generation. Then, in Christ, is a different generation. So Christ is actually a generation. Now, that is the generation we belong to. And God said to Abraham, this must be done in every generation. Every generation. Well, we read in, 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 in Genesis chapter 17. God said, as for you, you will keep my covenant, you and your descendants after you, in all their generations. So you don't take this command lightly. You simply believe God and obey it. You don't try to bring sense into it. The word is clear. If we want to be part of the promise of God, then you don't take things like this for granted. You look into it and said, wow. The question you should begin to ask the Lord now is, Lord, what do we do about this? And then the wisdom of God is going to be given to you specifically. Now, now, the thing about the word of God is you don't wake up and say, this is what everybody must do. No, but you bring forth the truth. That's what I'm bringing up. You bring forth the truth. Now, every man who has a heart for God takes the truth and they go before the Lord in prayer. That's the purpose of truth. They go before the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, wow, I never thought of this. I never knew this. What should I do with this now?
So we're in the Christ generation. And in Christ's generation. Now, there are truths that I'll bring you into by the Spirit of God. Because um, we'll still be talking about this next week. So we're not going to rush this up to finish this now. There are truths that I'm going to bring you into in the Christ generation. But first and foremost, is is, is important we understand what we stand on. There is a covenant. That's what I've been trying to share with you since last week. There is a covenant that exists and we are supposed to be mindful of that covenant. It is sure it is true god has vowed to do his own part then we ought to do our own part we ought to but the problem with a lot of god's children is many of them participate in their part without understanding there are lots and lots of god's children that tight they don't even know why they tight they just say, I don't want to rob God. The Bible says, will a man rob God? Well, you don't even understand why God said that in the first place. What did God mean when he said, will a man rob God? You say, how can somebody steal from God? Oh, I explained tithing to you. When you don't tithe, and more especially when you don't tithe right. Now, not, not tithing and not tithing right is the same thing. I say, I pay my tithe, but God doesn't receive it. So how do you say you pay your tithe? It's the same thing. If the tithe doesn't get to where God wants it to be to, to get to, how would you claim you have paid it? If, if, you, if you give someone money in your heart, you feel you're giving somebody money, but you're sending it to the wrong person, and the money eventually doesn't get to the person, would you say you have given the person the money? You gave money quite all right. But as long as the person didn't get it, you are not going to get the result that you expected. This is plain truth. So this is where we must wake up. So you tight. Is God taking care of you? Can you vouch? Can you beat your chest and say, God, is the one thing i'm not talking about and who else will be taking care of me now after all if if he didn't give me life would i go to work if he didn't give me bread will i go to work if he didn't give me that's not what i'm talking about now can you can you put your salary aside there's nothing wrong in any salary but there's everything wrong thinking that your salaries will maintain you can you put that salary that, that's a test this is a test from you from from you to prove that god is with you can you put that salary aside i say lord I, I don't want to touch this salary you i'm in covenant with you and i tithe the tithing shows the covenant of sustenance meaning you are supposed to sustain me because some, some of us are too locked up with this system that it's so difficult to take our minds out of it. The only way you can think of prospering is God giving you a better paying job. Meanwhile, you can be a cleaner. I go here. You can be a cleaner and still be driving a good car. You can be a cleaner and still purchase a whole house. Yes! That's the point. Because with God, there is no difference. A PhD holder and a school sat individual, there's no difference between, in, in, between in, 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 in sight of God between the two of them. No, it's who's ready to obey him. It's the same God who is rich to us all. He's the one we're talking about. He doesn't favor one against the other or above the other. My time is up. Father, I pray for your children. 
bring their minds to the truth of the Abrahamic covenant. That they will begin to flourish in it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let miracles take place in your life this weekend. Let this weekend be full of testimonies for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have the best weekend ever. Bye.